Every time I sit down for a video now, it really does feel as if I'm just picking up right where I left off from the previous one in some kind of crazy episode of What Does Aldas Think of F1 This Week TV series. And yet again, I find myself almost doing a continuation from my previous video, which of course was my George Russell preview to his Mercedes debut. Now, after what can only be described as a bittersweet moment in which he completely lived up to my expectations and delivered above and beyond what a lot of other people thought he could do, in the end, it turned out to be all for nothing as he was hit with a Mercedes calamity during the pit stops, which was perfectly described by Toto Wolf after the race. Overall, for us, it was just a colossal fuck up. I have to apologize for that, but I, I'm not allowed to say that, yeah, but yeah. it was. And then on top of that, he also got a slow puncture with about 10 laps to go, despite leading for the majority of the race and being as close to flawless as you can get. However, today I want to try and discuss the implications of Russell's incredible Mercedes debut and why his performance has to wake up Toto and the people at Mercedes in terms of what is the best driver lineup for them going forward into the next few years and how exactly to handle the new and emerging Mercedes driver triangle. Now also guys, super quick bit of promo before we jump in, I recently did a video over on the Veloce Esports channel and if you guys didn't know or don't follow me over on social media, I've actually recently partnered with Veloce which I am super excited about and hopefully over the course of 2021 we can create some mega content together for you guys when F1 finally opens up for the fans. But before then and as I said we recently did a very fun video of trying to guess well known team radios that have actually been distorted and we kind of made it into a fun little competition as well between me, Hayden from Veloce, and Kira, who is also a fellow F1 YouTuber. Now, needless to say, my performance was pretty much as bad as that Mercedes double stop, so if you think that you would enjoy seeing me absolutely bottle it on that video, then definitely go and check it out and also support the Veloce channel as well by subscribing for some great content that we've got planned in 2021. Anyway, guys, now let's jump in to the Mercedes driver triangle. Now, firstly, I'm going to really quickly kick off by talking about these guys individually, and I'm going to begin with Lewis Hamilton and where exactly he fits in to this Mercedes driver triangle. Now, as I am recording this right now, there is still no news as to whether or not Lewis will race in Abu Dhabi in the final race of the 2020 season. Now, the reason why I bring this up is that quite literally, Lewis still doesn't have a contract for next season, which means technically, if he does decide to call it a day in F1, we might have seen Lewis Hamilton compete in his last ever race at the Bahrain Grand Prix. Now, obviously this is very unlikely, but the point I'm trying to make with this is that looking at what Lewis has already achieved in F1 so far, which includes a record equaling seven world titles, 95 wins, and 98 pole positions, I genuinely wouldn't be massively surprised if Lewis does call it a day and decide to retire at the end of the season. Now, don't get me wrong, of course I would be shocked in a way considering that he has another surefire chance to win another title next year with Mercedes before the rules reset in 2022. But Lewis has so much going on outside of F1 that it's not completely ridiculous to suggest it, especially considering that Toto has also not signed a contract for next year either. And the thing about Lewis and Toto is that they genuinely do just come as a package. And if one doesn't sign the contract, I think there is a massive possibility that the other one doesn't sign as well. So in terms of Lewis, he's in this really strange situation where he has won everything and more under the sun and he is still very much in his prime with a guaranteed great car for next year and neither he nor Toto have a contract to race for next season. And next season, by the way, is just four months away. So, you know, is there something there or is it all just smoke? I don't know. But one thing that isn't in doubt is Lewis's place at Mercedes and when he is ready to sign on the dotted line, Mercedes will absolutely be ready as well. However, the same cannot be said of Lewis's teammate Valtteri Bottas. Now, a fun fact about Bottas's Mercedes career is that he has never been given a contract longer than one year. Since joining the team in 2017, he's only ever been given one year extensions every single season. And whilst I'm sure that he's not complaining about being retained by the best team on the grid, only living off one year contracts with not a lot of long term security, that just can't be good for a driver's confidence. Now, having said that, the one thing that I have noticed with Valtteri is that especially over the past two seasons, whenever he gets that brand new Mercedes deal midway through the season, to me it seems as though he always gets a little bit complacent and it almost seems like his season begins to tail off at the end of the year. Now, whether or not that's actually true, only Valtteri will really know, but that doesn't take away from the fact that this season in 2020, he just hasn't been good enough. 
Now, in terms of qualifying, he's not been too bad up against, statistically, the greatest qualifier in the history of the sport. He's had five pole positions to Lewis's 10, which isn't awful. And when it comes down to it, not only have they locked out the front row on more than one occasion, but the gap on average between them is usually less than two tenths. But it's the races where Valtteri really shows why Lewis is on another level compared to him. The poor starts, the lockups, and the fact that on more than one occasion, he's struggled to make his way through the field when he's found himself down the order. Now, in his defense, I can't go and not mention the crazy amount of bad luck that Valtteri has had all season long as well, because... I'm not on the bandwagon of hating Bottas like many people do. In all honesty, I'm not really on the bandwagon of hating any driver. I like to analyze drivers and make an informed opinion as best as I can. And with Valtteri this season, if there was ever any bad luck at Mercedes, it has always fallen on his side of the garage. From retiring with reliability issues to crazy pit stops like in Sakir, which basically ruined any chances for him to get a race win, to punctures like at the Bahrain Grand Prix, which again sent him down the field and on a recovery drive and even to the puncture that both of the Mercedes drivers got at the British Grand Prix. However, again, in that situation, Hamilton's puncture came midway through the final lap of the race whilst Bottas got it at the beginning of a lap which meant he had to do a whole lap on a puncture on one of the longest Grand Prix circuits on the calendar which cost him way more time and put him out of the points and again ruined his race. In summary, when it comes to Bottas' place in the Mercedes driver triangle, people are always trying to clown him and put him down, but in reality, Valtteri is the exact kind of driver that both Ferrari and Red Bull are crying out for right now. So what I don't understand is how some fans belittle Bottas, but then in the same breath, go and cry online at the fact that Ferrari and Red Bull are not able to get two drivers onto a team working coherently and maximizing the package that they are given. Bottas knows his place at Mercedes. He knows that he is given equal treatment and has an equal opportunity every single season to beat Lewis, but he also knows deep inside that Lewis has that X factor, especially on a Sunday, that he just can't match over the course of a whole season. And even Mercedes know that Bottas delivers to the best of his abilities, he doesn't rock the Mercedes bow, and in the end, him and Lewis have been one of the least toxic and most successful teammate partnerships of all time, which has produced four consecutive Constructors titles. So, lastly, we have George Russell completing our Mercedes triangle. Now, in truth, he was always in that Mercedes driver triangle. He's been a part of the team ever since he came into Formula 1 and has driven every single Mercedes car since 2017. However, his debut with the team in Sakir proved beyond a reasonable doubt that he is the real deal. Qualifying in second place, jumping Valtteri at the start, and then dominating the race from start to finish, and yes, despite the win being taken away from him, it was a Lewis Hamilton-esque performance, and that is with him wearing a shoe that was one size too small. I mean, God only knows what he would have been able to do with a size 11. More than just the performance, however, it was the way he carried himself over the course of the entire weekend. George just absolutely has to get Mercedes and Toto Wolf wondering what exactly is the best way that they can use and develop him early, and should they now consider putting him in that Mercedes ahead of schedule. In the end, Toto and Mercedes have to very carefully plan out their future and tell the drivers exactly what their plans are going forward so that all of the drivers are on the same page. So with that in mind, the next thing I also want to do is talk about what Mercedes' options actually are in terms of their driver lineups going forward and what also are some of the potential problems that they might run into as well. So, first I want to talk about next year and beginning with 2021, a lineup of Bottas and Russell actually could be on the cards. Now, obviously the only way that this is happening is if Lewis Hamilton does decide to leave Mercedes, and although this is very unlikely, Mercedes do now know that Russell is more of a Hamilton replacement for the future in terms of being a world championship caliber driver than a Bottas replacement and as someone who is more on the level of a very solid number two. And although I do think that the driver dynamic of Russell and Bottas would be a great one as none of them really have a challenging personality that would clash. The thing that would hold this lineup back is that there is no surefire bona fide experienced champion that would guarantee championship level performances in every single race which is exactly what Lewis has been doing year after year. 
The next lineup is another 2021 lineup, but this time with Hamilton and Russell. Now, this pairing on paper is not only very exciting, it's also theoretically the strongest combination out of the three drivers in the closest season coming up. And it's also a pairing that potentially could make Mercedes even better than they already are. Now, the positives would be getting Russell in early, which shouldn't really be a problem considering he's already looked very capable after only one race. And it would also allow Russell to get completely comfortable with the team and the car ahead of the huge rule reset in 2022. Honestly, at the beginning of 2020, this is exactly what I was hoping would actually happen. However, the thing that would hold this driver lineup back is first and foremost the fact that Mercedes have already given Valtteri a contract extension for next year. And although they could just tear up like Racing Point did with Sergio Perez, I think Mercedes should and will have more integrity than Racing Point did and stick to what they agreed with Valtteri Bottas, which in the end, I think is the right thing to do considering how much loyalty Valtteri has shown to the team. And finally, the last lineup I want to talk about is the most obvious considering everyone's contractual situation, which is Hamilton and Russell and Mercedes, but for 2022. Now, this is what we expect most likely will actually happen at the moment, but even then, leaving it late to sign Russell might actually end up costing Mercedes. For example, there is already rumors beginning to circle, and I must emphasize the word rumors, that after just one race for Mercedes, Red Bull, according to RTL, are already trying to poach Russell to get him into a winning car for 2021 alongside Max Verstappen. Now again, although these are just most likely rumors, it's not crazy to think that the other teams are also trying to poach Russell from Mercedes. And one other reason why leaving it till 2022 to sign Russell might cost Mercedes is what happens if Valtteri Bottas wins the title next year? I mean, yes, I can already hear you guys laughing in the future, but fact is, Lewis at some point is going to have to start declining in form and Valtteri has an equal shot at the title every single year. And let's say just for argument's sake that in 2021, he does put everything together and somehow wins the 2021 Formula One World Championship. How in the hell do Mercedes not extend the contract of a world champion and let him go from the team in place of a young driver who's only ever done one or two races for the team? So, in summary, young Russell has definitely given Mercedes something to think about. And although many people might be laughing and thinking that, you know, at the end of the day, Mercedes have the best car and they'll win regardless, that is the exact sort of complacent mentality that Mercedes want to avoid because it's that kind of thinking that could see them trip up and allow the other teams to catch up in 2021 and 2022. So, how they manage their driver triangle is crucial because Mercedes has been one of the most stable teams in terms of their driver lineup over the past 10 years and that stability has been one of the key factors in their success. The decision and what they do with Russell is important because it will define the team for the next two, three, four years and it will define how quickly Russell can get up to speed and begin challenging the likes of Hamilton and the rest of the grid for world championships. In the end, Mercedes need to make sure that they make the right decision, but more importantly, get the timing right as well, so that they don't end up like Red Bull and have an evolving door of drivers for the next few years. That is why the management of the Mercedes driver triangle is so important. That is why it could define the team going forward. And that is why they need to make sure that they play their cards right and manage their drivers correctly to carry on the Mercedes winning dynasty in Formula One. Well guys, there you go. That is my video on the Mercedes driver triangle, as I've called it anyway. Hopefully it kind of made a little bit of sense and hopefully it will start a few good conversations in the comments below now. Let me know if you were Toto Wolf and Mercedes, what would you do going forward to try and please all of the drivers? You know, it's so easy to just say, oh, you know, get rid of Bottas, he's rubbish. But in the end, he's also been loyal to the team and he also deserves to see out the contract that Mercedes have given him. But either way, let me know all of your thoughts in the comments box below. I cannot wait to see what you guys think. And I hope you did enjoy this video and if you did then don't forget to drop a like smash that subscribe button you guys know what to do and don't forget to check out my social medias instagram and twitter will be above and guys i'll see you in the next one bye guys